Make sure you stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to show you around hole number one of this liveaboard long range steel trolley yacht that at the time of making this video is currently for sale. But more information about that later on in the video. Before I show you around, please don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. The more subscribers I get, the more boats like this I can get on. Crafted in the Netherlands by a commercial trawler specialist, Heijmeer Schipsbo, and designed by Gasmeer Yacht Design, this steel trawler yacht marries commercial trawler robustness with yachting comfort. This boat really is a true trawler at heart, built by experts in all-weather commercial trawlers, which are designed for year-round operation. She has a hard chine hull, with a long keel type profile and a steel hull that is up to 20 millimeters thick. Up here we have the air intake for the engine room. Up here we have the port flopper stopper, so the, there's no fin or gyro stabilizers on here, uh, but these do act as a zero speed stabilizer as well because when the boat isn't moving, they almost kind of move in a figure of eight motion, uh, which helps to keep the boat stable uh, when you're not moving. But yeah, very effective and very simple system. Paravanes, also known as flopper stoppers or anti-roll stabilizers, are mechanical devices used to reduce the rolling motion of boats, particularly in rough seas. Paravanes operate by creating a countervailing force against the rolling motion of the boat. They consist of two delta-shaped fish or wings that are towed under water on opposite sides of the boat. As the boat rolls, the paravanes generate drag, which resists the roll and helps to stabilize the boat. Paravanes have a number of benefits, including being very effective in reducing rolling motion in heavy seas. They are also very simple to operate and require hardly any maintenance. They are cost effective too and are very versatile, plus they also have no effect on the boat's speed whilst underway. Moving aft, we can see the cockpit where you can get access to the swim platform via the outboard steps on the port side of the transom. Note also the ladder which leads to the boat deck, meaning that you have quick access to the boat's 100 kilogram capacity manual crane for when it comes to launching and recovering the boat's tender. Let's now head to the midship's boarding gate on the port side of the boat. As we step on board, note the threshold between the five millimeter thick deck and the entrance to the wheelhouse. This boat really is designed for long distance passage making in rough seas. As you can see, the boat has a dry exhaust. A new muffler was installed this year. I love the commercial looking radar mast on this boat, but now let's head up onto the foredeck, which has been finished with non-skid paint. In front of the wheelhouse is this handy storage compartment, which can be used to stow various bits of gear. The current owner keeps the hoses for the 3.5 bar fresh and saltwater deck wash in there. The boat is fitted with a 40 kilogram delta anchor and is deployed and recovered using a Maxwell RX-12 24 volt windlass. This huge chain locker on the starboard side currently houses 50 meters of 13 millimeter chain as well as a 100 meter long line. Some of you might be wondering why the guard rail is finished in a matte black paint. Well, it's because of the power of this searchlight. This powerful 180 watt LED bar is so bright that if the forward guard rails were any other color, then there would be too much glare from them when you are piloting the boat from the wheelhouse. Let's head back aft onto the boat deck. Once again, look at the watertight doors which give you access to the pilot's house from both the port and starboard side decks. The clever design of the hull also means that when you are battering through those big waves, any wash on the deck will quickly go back into the sea without compromising the aft section of the boat. First off, we have the life raft. And remember, if you need to get any additional sea survival equipment for your boat, check out my Amazon store. You'll find the link below in the video description. You will notice the rigging atop the coach roof. 
Now, this is for the orange jib that can be used in the very unlikely event that you are unable to motor. It can also be used for wind assisted cruising and comes complete with a winch, halyard, stoppers and sheets. There are six 120 watt solar panels also located on the coach roof. The boat also comes with a binami and an inflatable Talamex 2.7 meter rib fitted with a 2.5 horsepower four stroke outboard engine. I'm going to take you down into the engine room later on in the boat tour, but it's worth pointing out that this boat has a total of four watertight bulkheads. A fishtail rudder is a type of rudder that is designed to improve the maneuverability and efficiency of the boat. It's characterized by its unique fish shaped cross section, which helps to generate more lift and reduce drag compared to conventional rudders. This design also allows for larger rudder angles, which further enhances the maneuverability of the boat. Don't forget to check out my second YouTube channel, Boat Boy, where I take you on board the boats that I visit in a more informal way and show you some of my favorite features. But now let's head inside the boats before the next squall hits. During filming, as well as contending with bouts of sleet, the wind was gusting over 40 knots but that is exactly the sort of weather this truly hot was designed to operate in. And my subscribers already know that I do love the gnarly stuff. At the helm, we have a Ritchie compass as well as a Furuno satellite compass. Monitoring depth and vessel speed is a Furuno DST 800 depth sounder and log. Wind conditions are monitored by a Furuno FL 500 wind set. Autopilot duties are managed by a Furuno Navpilot 711C and keeping an eye on our rudder angle is effortless thanks to a dedicated indicator. For situational awareness, the Furuno 1945 radar, boasting a 10 inch display, provides great situational awareness. Chart plotting is effortless thanks to a Furuno 9 inch display and safety is further enhanced by the Furuno Class B AIS transponder and the Jotron 406 EPIRB. In my humble opinion, a trolley yacht would not be a trolley yacht without the forward raking windows. The glass on board this boat is made from 15 mm thick tempered Gibo glass, as well as 12 mm thick Lexan glass in the saloon. And when you're underway with the autopilot engaged, you can sit here on the raised seating area and just sit back and enjoy the view. And if you're thinking of undertaking your own voyage, don't forget to check out this book. You'll find a link in the video description along with a 40% discount code. There is just the one cabin on board and we are in it now. So this is the uh, forward cabin. As you can see at the moment, there are twin single beds, but this can be turned into a double cabin if you want to. I like the fact that this is raised up here. Uh, lots of headroom in this space plenty of light coming in as well thanks to the portholes and of course you've got the overhead skylight there as well that can also be opened up for some additional ventilation uh, lots of storage obviously we've got some cabinetry uh, on this bulkhead but also if we take a step down here uh, the current configuration uh, we've got lots of storage space under the port berth and also the starboard berth as well. Between the two berths is a hatch that leads down to this storage space. Hanging wardrobe locker space over here on the starboard side. Good use of lighting. Um, I like the indirect LED lighting that we've got on the uh, overhead here. Uh, but yeah, it's a really bright, airy space. Lots of room. You definitely would not feel claustrophobic in here. Uh, if you decide to go on a long distance journey, bearing in mind the incredible range on this boat, uh, absolutely breathtaking range. Here we have the ensuite. Again, lots of room, lots of places to stow all your gear. Uh, we've got a little porthole over there on the port side, letting some natural light in. Uh, we've got our sink with some more storage space underneath the sink. And over here to the starboard side, we've got a walk-in shower, plenty of room in there as well. But yeah, it's a really impressive cabin, really good use of space. As I say, the current owners have this configured as a twin single. 
but if you wanted to, you could turn this into a double. Heating on board is provided by a Kabola 9 kilowatt central heating system and hot water is provided by a 220 volt system which is also linked to the engine making great use of the heat as is provided by the engine when you're underway. An efficient two pump system on board also means that you get good water pressure when you're using the shower. If you wanted to you could convert the seating in the saloon into two single berths. Head down now into the saloon and the galley. Uh, so the galley is over here on the left hand side. One of the first thing that sticks out to me again is the amount of storage that we've got over here. Uh, here is where we have one of the fridges. Good amount of space in there. We've got the induction hob. Uh, we get fit three uh, utensils on there. Over here we've got a little porthole. Great view forward when you're uh, underway. A window over here on the port side. And behind me we've got a large sink. More storage space under the sink. A little microwave up here. But yeah, if I pan around, considering you're only on a 42 foot boat, it feels like on a boat that is much bigger than 42 foot, it really does. Lots of headroom in here. I reckon there's probably about, what, just under seven foot of headroom, uh, which is really impressive. But look at how much space we've got for those long distance voyages that you would clearly be taking this boat on uh, if you acquired her. Got a nice dining area over here behind the galley. Someone can be facing forward or your guests facing aft. But really great view all around uh, the boat thanks to these big windows. The broker from Devault was telling me that these windows aren't double glazed and there's good reason for that. The way they've actually been designed means that there is no condensation. You won't get any condensation on this boat uh, and they're sealed from the outside in. So if you ended up taking a big wave um, on your starboard or your port side, uh, the windows are not gonna break in, which is a really important thing uh, if you're gonna be crossing the Atlantic, which I'm sure if you bought this boat, is something you'd probably wanna do. Got a day head over here on the starboard side. Again, look, we've got two portholes in here, so lots of natural light. And under here, we open up this hatch. We've got plenty of storage for your dry storage. We've got a dryer over there as well, but look at that space. Obviously the light's not on at the moment, but Lots of space to keep all of your uh, dry storage in here. If you're wondering where the washing machine is, let's take you back up. And there we go. There's a washing machine hidden away in there. One of the things I love about this boat as well is the cockpit. I mean, first and foremost, look at that door, that watertight door big threshold down there as well open this up and look at that the cockpit I'm not going to go out there because I've not got my shoes on and it's obviously very wet but over there on the starboard side is the hatch that leads down into the steering gear compartment and a scupper over there on the starboard side and one over there on the port side but yeah if you were in following seas you know you shut this door uh, and section this area off, then you would have no problems at all. The ladder up there takes you up onto the coach roof. And once the rain stops, we will go outside and uh, have a look around the upper deck. I'll just take you back over to the galley again and just pan around to show you this space. Now that we've finished having a look around the accommodation area and the wheelhouse, it's time to check out the engine room. Access to the engine room is via a hatch located on the port side of the wheelhouse. Of course, one of the benefits of having access to the engine room internally means that you don't have to go out on the upper deck 
to get access to the engine room. Inside the engine room of this trolley arts, we find the heart of its mechanical prowess. At the core is a single engine setup featuring a John Deere 4045 AFM M1. Installed in 2021, this diesel engine boasts 160 horsepower, translating to about 117 kilowatts and has clocked 1,350 hours of operation. The engine's cooling system is a freshwater heat exchanger, ensuring optimal temperature regulation. Power is transmitted via a shaft drive controlled by Bowden cables for precision and reliability. The gearbox is a robust twin-disc hydraulic system engineered for a heavy duty 3 to 1 ratio. Maneuvering the vessel is made smoother with an electric Vetus bow thruster, offering proportional control for delicate adjustments. Below the water, the fixed propeller with four blades is made from durable stainless steel. Its shaft is bathed in oil thanks to the efficient Blockland lubrication system, minimizing wear and tear. The engine room houses a dual electric pump system with one 24 volt and another capable of handling 6,000 liters per hour at 220 volts. The electrical installation is versatile, supporting both 24 and 220 volts. Generating power is the Whisper Quiet Fisher Panda 5000i Neo Generator with a mere 280 hours of operation. It's supported by a variety of batteries, two start batteries of 230 amps each from 2020, two service batteries of 230 amps each from 2023, a generator battery from 2020, and two bow thruster batteries also from 2020. Monitoring and managing this power is seamless with the Victron BV712 Smart and a graphic display. The Victron Quattro unit serves as both a battery charger and an inverter with a capacity of 24 volts, 3000 watts and 70 amps. Sure power connectivity is integrated accompanied by a Victron 3600 watt insulation transformer for safety and efficiency. Additionally, a Schenker Zen water maker is installed, capable of producing 30 litres of fresh water per hour, essential for those long journeys. A notable feature is the dual alternator set up on the main engine, each offering 24 volts at 100 amps, ensuring ample charging capacity. When it comes to her tankage, the boat has two 900 litre freshwater tanks and an 80 litre blackwater tank. Fuel-wise, the boat has two 1,578-litre steel fuel tanks, as well as two 884-litre steel tanks as well. There is also a steel day tank that holds 98 litres. But what about her range? Well, she has a top speed of 8.8 .8 knots, but if you are happy to motor along at her cruising speed of 6.3 knots, then she has an incredible range of 5 thousand nautical miles which for a boat that is 42 foot LOA and can be operated by a couple or even single-handedly with the right experience is very impressive. At the time of uploading this video to my YouTube channel she is listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers for the price as detailed in the video title. If you are interested in finding out more now we'll leave a link to the Volk's website at the bottom of the video description. And if you are a massive fan of trawler style yachts like I am, then I'll be really interested to know what you think of this boat. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and a big thanks to my channel members for helping to support my YouTube channel. If you'd like to become a member then click on the link in the video description. If you haven't already please don't forget to give the video a like and to subscribe to my channel and if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the two video recommendations in front of you now. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.